to the final segment, which is quadraphonics. So what I have here in front of you is a quadraphonic system. I can't exactly call it a stereo system because you know stereo has two channels and a quadraphonic has four. Uh, nowadays it's called the 4.0 surround sound and um, the cool thing about quadraphonics is that you take the four speakers and you put them in different corners of the room and then you sit in the center of the room and that was the first surround sound. And um, the downfalls of quadraphonics is that it lacked its own format, it relied on a bunch of other stuff, some of which, you know, was kind of flaky at times. Um, it was more expensive than a standard stereo, and you had to pay for more speakers, and there was a uh, few recordings that were actually made using any sort of quadraphonic format, though uh, today some of them have been reissued as like uh, surround sound CDs, stuff like that. And um, quadraphonics was originally introduced in 1970 as the quad eight for eight tracks, but was soon, you know, used for vinyl and reel-to-reel -reel recordings. And um, it really failed with vinyl because there was two different ways that it was recorded onto vinyl. You could either have discrete channels, which had four channels completely separated, or you could have a matrix encoded two channels, and then the the quadraphonic system itself would take the two tracks or two channels and split it up into four and um, this gave it some backwards compatibility with uh, standard stereo turntables but if you had the discrete ones you couldn't use those on regular turntables at all you had to have your quadraphonic system and um, so besides you know using eight tracks and reel-to-reel -reel and vinyl there was actually some radio stations that did quadraphonic audio and um, they didn't really last that much I think uh, BBC had one for a little while there's one in California and um, they were actually composed of two standard radio stations and uh, you could go on your standard stereo radio and just pick up both stations they're probably a little bit apart from each other so uh, there was two standards that were adopted for vinyl which was the CD4, also known as the Quadradisc standard. And um, this behaved like a stereo, which had a carrier signal. So you had the stereo tracks, and then the carrier signal was then taken in by the uh, demodulator, and that split it up into four different tracks. And um, for the four tracks, there was like a left back and left forward came out of the left track and then the right back and the right forward came out of the right track so you broke the two tracks into four tracks and um, to use this you needed a, a CD4 cartridge, a CD4 demodulator and a four channel amplifier so you had to have all of this and um, usually the demodulator and the amplifier were built into each other but for the CD4 cartridge you had to have that separately and um, there was also another format for vinyl called Stereo Quadraphonic, which made use of the matrix encoded format, but that wasn't as popular. And um, basically the whole format failed because of the vinyl problem. And they didn't really last that long. I think the last, what was it, the last 8-track that made use of Quadraphonic came out in 1978 or something. So this wasn't even around a whole decade but I mean, it's a pretty cool system and I'll show off what I have here in front of me. This is a Sony 4 channel stereo music system. Um, this is actually probably the coolest part right here in the corner where you have the listening position display and um, basically you could after you put the speakers in the four corners of the room you could change up everything, like fine tune it to where you were in the room. And you have your power switch, headphone jack, going over here, volume, bass, treble. And you have your, your AM FM tuner with all kinds of options here. And then down here, you know, you have your discrete, your square, all this interesting quadraphonic stuff, monitor modes, phono, AM FM tuner here 
Up here is the turntable. This up here. And um, this is actually a pretty standard turntable made by Sony. Um, this particular turntable in this quadraphonic system is broken. Uh, the motor isn't turning anything anymore. And I actually have another turntable that is the same brand and like the same model number as this one, which I'm trying to switch out, but to no success yet. And um, basically, if you just take the cartridge off of this and put it on the other one, it should work as a quadraphonic turntable. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. I mean, um, the audio going in to the system is in stereo, so it, it's, as long as it's not you know, like a four-channel turntable already where the demodulator is built into the turntable, I think this you know switch could go pretty easy. So now I'm going to show you the back of the unit. So, down there over here we have the antennas, FM, AM, and ground. And then we have a two-channel tape recorder here for, you know, recording out, record in. And then over here is the discrete input. So you have front and back for your left and front and back for your right channels. And then these are your speaker over here for front and back for your left, front and back for your right. And uh, I'm not going to bother demonstrating anything here for, you know, like showing you the sound because since the turntable is broken, you can't really, you know, experience the four channel sound with anything else. If you put it on the radio, it'll just kind of split it up however it wants to. And uh, before I turn it on to show you, I'll show you over here, here's the four speakers completely identical. I mean, you know, they have a pretty cool look to them. They're kind of small for, I guess, your audiophile who probably wants some big honking speakers in every corner of the room. But I guess, you know, if you were top of the line, had some space concerns or whatever, you probably want something small like that. Now, going over here to plug this guy in. Of course, this cord is wrapped up very strangely. Alright. Alright, we got the power. Turn that on. And now, you can see down here, let me adjust the camera a bit for that. There's a little dot. And now, what you can do is, depending on where you are in the room, let's say I'm in dead center, you can bring it up and then bring it over and that'll adjust the sound for all the speakers so that I get the best sound quality depending on where I am in the room. But like let's say that I have a chair down over here that'll work too. It'll give you a good sound there. It'll adjust the levels of everything else so that I get the best sound right there. And so that's the quadraphonic system. Um, I would show you a quadraphonic uh, LP, but I actually don't remember where it went. And it was just some sort of like little Christmas LP, it wasn't anything too cool. But uh, if I ever find that, and if I ever get the turntable working, I'll be sure to do a follow-up segment. And uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked this episode of Obsolete. Um, I got a few special thanks to give out there. Um, Finstack, of course, always for you know hosting the IRC channel, which uh, you can visit by the link below. Um, I'm usually in there all the time. There's usually five or six fans that are always in there. So if you're interested in anything in the episodes, any questions, there's always somebody there to talk to about it. Even if I'm not there, there's somebody in there who probably knows as much as I do, if not more, about the subject. And um, give a shout out to Vine Rev forums and. Uh, Rant Radio Forums, 
I mean, I've, I've been posting updates on the episodes to those two forums, and I've always gotten positive reviews. And everybody there is really supporting, and I'm just really thankful for that. Um, I don't really have many other outlets that I can share this stuff to, so every little bit counts, and I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Um, also, Electronic Beer. Big fan of Electronic Beer, the podcast. They keep giving me shout-outs, and they have one every Wednesday. And I always feel bad because I do this monthly, so basically they give me four shout-outs for every one shout-out I give them. So big shout-out to Electronic Beer. Tune in Wednesday nights. Um, if you go to the website below, or if you even go to Thin Stack, you can probably find it fairly easily. It's a cool show. deals with you know current events, uh, tech technology, uh, and beer, of course. So, you know, good stuff there. And uh, that brings this episode to a close. I just want to thank everybody who watches it. Just by watching this, you're supporting the show. And uh, check out the website for new information. There's also now a Facebook group, well, a Facebook like, so you can like the show, put it in your t TV show section of your Facebook profile. Uh, as always, there's the Twitter account. And uh, new video just about every month. That might be coming to a slowdown soon, but I hope to do about eight episodes before I take a long break. So I'm thinking an eight episode season is where I want to be. All right, and uh, that's the end of this episode. See you guys for the next one. MIT, I can I can feel their Ivy League intrigue all over this. All right, uh, grab that phone and hook it to the modem, okay? I don't care if they're running off a of NORAD's main frame. By the time our killer weekend rolls around, I promise we'll be online to hack out little terminal entry.